Right, so hello and welcome back to Books and Things and welcome to another video. And today I'm going to be doing my Jane Austen July TBR and telling you everything that I'm looking forward to reading in Jane Austen July. So if you don't know, Jane Austen July is a month-long readathon that takes place every July, which is all about reading Jane Austen and the re things related to Jane Austen in the month of July. It's hosted by me, by Marissa from Blatantly Bookish and Claudia from the Spencer's Library. I will link their channels down below and I'll link all of our announcement videos down below as well, where you can go and find more about the challenges um, and recommendations from all of us. But today I just wanted to talk about what I'm planning on reading for Jane Austen July. So this TBR is a bit of a mixture of a TBR and a pile of possibilities. So I have 11 books that are like on my TBR that I really want to try and get to and then I have nine like extra possibilities if I finish those 11 books I might read them but I'm probably not going to but we'll see. I'm also not 100% certain whether I'm just going to read Jane Austen July books this July. Um, I usually do just focus on the Jane Austen related books every July um, but there's at least one book that I um, have started in June which I don't think I'm going to manage to finish in June because it's very long so I think I'll be careful carrying on that into July and whether I pick up one or two other things that aren't for Jane Austen July um, in order to try and get down my physical CPR, I don't know, we'll see. But regardless, I'm excited for all of these books, so let me get straight into them. So the first challenge for Jane Austen July is to read one of Jane Austen's main six novels, um, and I have two of Jane Austen's books that I'm hoping to read this July. Um, one of them, which I'll definitely be reading, is Northanger Abbey, which is our group read, one of our read-alongs for Jane Austen July this year. Um, this is a reread for me. Um, I don't even know how many times I've read Northanger Abbey before, but several, five maybe, maybe less than five, four, I don't know, several times. I'm hopefully going to be listening to this in an audiobook because it's not one I think I've listened to before and I think that'll be a good rereading experience for me. Northanger Abbey is the story of young Catherine Morland who gets taken to Bath by some family friends and when there meets the Tilney family and ends up going to their big um, house, their spooky grand house called Northanger Abbey, um, and Catherine more than loves gothic novels, so she's very excited to go to a big spooky abbey, and everything kind of goes on from there. I think it'd be really nice to reread Northanger Abbey because it is probably my least favourite Jane Austen, but I also feel like I need to think about it more and give it another chance. Um, especially in light of um, the next Jane Austen book I'm going to talk about. Um, so I'm just very excited to reread Northanger Abbey this year. And then the other book I want to reread this year is Sense and Sensibility. As I spoke about in my Nelson video and as I spoke about last Jane Austen July, um, Sense and Sensibility is another of Jane Austen's books that has always been one of my least favourite. And then last year um, I read a really interesting book called The Genius of Jane Austen by Paula Byrne, which was about Jane Austen's love of the theatre. Um, and then I reread Sense and Sensibility just afterwards and loved it a lot more. So I'm really excited to reread Sense and Sensibility again this year with my newfound love of Sense and Sensibility. Um, and also I'm hoping to do a video all about the character of Mr. Willoughby, who is really interesting. Um, and I think will be an interesting character to dissect. So I'm looking forward to rereading Sense and Sensibility again this year. Um, again, maybe one I'll listen to on audiobook. The Rosamund Pike audiobook is really good. Um, but I will see. Um, I feel like I have a few things I'm planning to listen to on audiobook. So I'll see how I go. And then for the second challenge of Jane Austen July, which is to read something by by Jane Austen that is not one of her main six novels. I'm going to be reading a bunch of Jane Austen's Juvenalia from this collection and also from online. Our other group read, our other read-along for this Jane Austen July is Jane Austen's Juvenalia. Um, there is a list over on the Goodreads group and in our announcement videos of the Juvenalia we're going to be reading and on what days. And I'm really looking forward to rereading Jane Austen's Juvenalia because I really, really enjoy her Juvenalia. It is like slightly wild um, and silly and strange, but I really, really love it. So I'm really looking forward to re reading some of the short stories that she wrote when she was a teenager um, and yeah I think it'll be excellent fun. The third challenge for Jane Austen July is to read a non-fiction book about Jane Austen or her time um, and then I have quite a few things that I'm hoping to read this year and I have gone um, down the history route this year. Last year I went very much down the like literary criticism route and then this year I'm going very much down the history route um, and I'm going to read some stuff about Jane Austen's time. Um, so I have um, two books here that I've got out of the library. I'm hoping to read one of them possibly both of them but I'm gonna see how I go um, so this one is Behind Closed Doors at Home in Georgian England by Amanda Vickery um, and this is a book about home life in um, the Georgian period which you know sounds um, like exactly my kind of history book um, and I've heard great things about Amanda Vickery before I feel like I might have read some journal articles by her when I was at university um, her name really rings a bell I feel like I've definitely read 
um, either bits of her books before uh, university or um, essays that she's written. Um, and this should be hopefully a really interesting read. And it's also not too long, which for an academic history book um, is always valuable. Um, I say that it does look like quite small writing, so we'll see whether I manage to get through this and the other one, but it sounds really interesting anyway. And then the other book I got out of the library is this. This is The Regency Revolution, Jane Austen, Napoleon, Lord Byron and the Making of the Modern World by Robert Morrison, which again sounds like a really interesting book, really interesting premise for a history book. So I gather this is about, you know, how the Regency period was revolutionary um, and how it kind of like made the modern world. So the blurb says, the Victorians are often credited with ushering in our current era, yet the seeds of change were planted in the years before in the Regency period. So this sounds like it'll be a really interesting book to me, both as someone interested in the Regency period, but also someone interested in the Victorian period and its legacy, because I think it'll be like looking at how, what things we think of as Victorian legacies um, are sort of Regency legacies too. So I'm excited for this one too, actually. I really hope I do manage to read both of them because they both look really interesting. And both of them are sort of like, probably going to be a little bit dense, but they're not too long. They're both about 300 pages. So hopefully I will manage to read both of these history books this Jane Austen July. They both sound really interesting. And then the other thing that I might read this Jane Austen July, um, depending on how I get on with those two, is this. This is Elegant Etiquette in the 19th Century by Mallory James. Now I have read this before, um, so this would be a reread for me, but this is a real favourite history book of mine. Um, and it covers the whole of the 19th century, um, so from Jane Austen's time into the Victorian period. And it looks at etiquette in um, Britain, in the 19th century um, in a really interesting, fun way. Um, I've read this before, as I said, but many years ago now. I recommend it nearly every Jane Austen July, but I've been thinking it might be time for a reread, um, especially because this is a book I use a lot for um, historical research as a writer, um, writing historical fiction. This is a book that I like turn to again and again and often like have on my desk to look up points of etiquette. This is just a book that I've always found really fun and really useful and I've been meaning to read it for ages, so I might manage to do that this Jane Austen July. We'll see. Again, it is pretty short, but you know, we'll see how I go. The next prompt for Jane Austen July is to read a retelling of a Jane Austen book or a work of historical fiction set in Jane Austen's time. So I have three like main picks for this and then I have lots of potential backups that I might get to this month, we're just gonna see. But the three main ones that I do really want to read um, this Jane Austen July. The first is The Murder of Mr Wickham by Claudia Gray and this is a Jane Austen retelling which I gather takes lots of Jane Austen characters um, and puts them into some kind of murder mystery setting where, you know, Mr. Wickham is murdered. I don't know too much more about them than that. Um, I'm pretty sure that there are characters not just from Pride and Prejudice in it, that it's got other characters from other Austen books in as well. And this is one that I think had only just come out um, for Jane Austen July last year, and a lot of people were reading it and talking about it and really loving it. So I'm excited to read this one, and my library has it on audiobook, so hopefully I will manage to get to it this July. Then I'd also really like to read Just As You Are by Camille Kellogg, which is a very, very newly released queer Pride and Prejudice retelling, which I think takes Pride and Prejudice into the modern world. Both Elizabeth and Darcy are women, um, and I think the Darcy character is the Elizabeth character's boss. I don't know too much about this one, um, but I like saw the cover on Twitter and was like, oh, that looks like a fun rom-com. And then when I was doing research on Austin retellings online, um, I came across the fact that it is in fact a Prime Prejudice retelling. So I feel like this would be a great one for me to read this Jane Austen July. I have it on ebook um, and hopefully I'll manage to get to it in July. It sounds really fun. And then the other thing I would really like to read this July, which is a slightly rogue um, thing to read, but I think it would be really interesting, um, is when I was reading The Genius of Jane Austen by Paula Byrne last <laughs> July, um, she mentioned that A.A. A. Milne, the author of Winnie the Pooh, wrote a stage adaptation of Pride and Prejudice called Miss Elizabeth Bennet. And it's quite hard to get hold of, but I think I can get hold of it if I go and read it at the library rather than um, getting it anywhere. I can't seem to find it online anywhere. But I think it would be really interesting to read like a 1930s stage adaptation of Pride and Prejudice written by A.A. A. Milne. Wouldn't that be fascinating? So yeah. I'm going to try and read that too. And then there are six other books I found that I'm kind of interested in reading. I'm definitely not going to read all of these this day last in July, but I might end up reading some of them, um, depending on where I can find them. Um, so the first three I can get out of the library, um, either physically or on audio, and the other three I don't have any easy access to, so I'm probably not going to read them, but they're sort of in my, like, vague Jane Austen related TBR for some point in the future, so I thought I would mention them anyway. So one book I would be kind of interested in reading this Jane Austen July is Aisha at Last by Uzma Jalaluddin. This is a Pride and Prejudice retelling set 
met in modern day Toronto about a Muslim woman working as a teacher um, and I would presume her romantic relationships. Um, I've heard good things about Aisha at last before. Um, it's definitely one I've seen people read for Jane Austen July before. So like I said, it's at my library. Might manage to read it this Jane Austen July, but we'll see. Then there is also Ladies of the House, which is a modern retelling of Sense Sensibility by Laura Edmonston, um, which I can also access at my library. That was one that was vaguely on my list last year and I didn't get to, so I might get it to this year. We'll see. And again, from my last year's TBR or Pile of Possibilities, there is Rational Creatures by Tracy Chevalier, which is a work of historical fiction set in Jane Austen's time. I really like Tracy Chevalier. I've read quite a few books by her before, so this is one that is vaguely on my radar. And then there are three other retellings that I don't have an easy way to access. Um, I'm not necessarily going to buy this Jane Austen July because I have plenty of other things to read, but they do sound really interesting, so I thought I would mention them to keep them on my radar. One is For Darkness Shows the Stars by Diana Peterfront, which I believe is a dystopian persuasion retelling which sounds amazing um i've heard great things about this so one day we'll see i've also heard good things about the year in between which is a sense sensibility retelling by christina morland great surname for someone writing a jane austen retelling anyway um the year in between is about the year that takes place um within like the last chapter of sense sensibility and some stuff that happens in that time that we don't get to see um which if you're familiar with sense sensibility you might vaguely understand what I mean but I won't say because I don't want to include any spoilers um but the year in between I think would be a really interesting book so it's definitely one I want to read at some point probably not this year but we'll see um and then the other book which I found when I was researching Jane Austen retellings that I think sounds really good is If I Loved You Less by um Tamsin Parker which is a modern day Emma retelling and I'm pretty sure this is a queer retelling I think both the Emma and the knightly characters are both women um and this sounds really great as well um and it would be nice to read an Emma retelling because I feel like I do spend a lot of time reading Crime Prejudice retellings. Basically there's a lot of retellings that sound amazing that I want to read. I'm obviously not going to read all nine of the books I just mentioned this Jane Austen July but you know um, I'll see how I go. Hopefully I'll get to more than three but we're just going to have to see. The next prompt, the final reading prompt of Jane Austen July is to read a book by a contemporary of Jane Austen. So you know a book published or written between 1775 and 1817. Um, and one thing I really want to read for this challenge is this. This is The Secret Diaries of Miss Anne Lister. Um, this is the first volume which is I Know My Own Heart, edited by Helena Whitbread. Um, I was sort of debating whether this book should go in this prompt or not, but I think this is probably the prompt it best fits in. These are diaries written by Anne Lister, who was a contemporary of Jane Austen. Um, these diaries were not published in her life. They were not published until a very long time after her life. This is a kind of historical source I've been meaning to read for a really, really long time. Um, and I think it'll be really, really interesting. I'm going to start off with volume one. I'll probably get to volume two at some point in the future, maybe next Jane Austen July. Um, but I think this will be a really, really interesting read. So Anne Lister was um, sort of 16 years younger than Jane Austen. Um, she was born in 1791 and died in 1840. And the journal entries in this edition span from 1816 to 1824, um, so some of Jane Austen's life and obviously some are after Jane Austen's life as well. Um, and the back of the book says, Anne Lister defied the role of early 19th century womanhood. She was bold, fiercely independent, a landowner, industrialist and traveller who lived openly as a lesbian. She kept intimate diaries of her life and loves, um, much of which were written in code. Um, so this just sounds fascinating and I think this will be a really, really interesting read. And then the other two things I want to read um, for this prompt are two plays, um, which I think will be really good to read, both because I really enjoy reading plays and I've had more luck with um, Georgian plays um, than I have had with Georgian novelists who aren't Jane Austen, to be honest. And also I wanted to read some more Georgian plays after Paula Byrne in um, The Genius of Jane Austen was talking about how much the theater of Jane Austen's time influenced her. So the two plays, I would like to try and read in Jane Austen in July, both of which I can read for free on Gutenberg, um, are The Rivals by Sheridan, which is from 1775. I have seen School for Scandal by Sheridan many years ago, and I think I enjoyed it, um, so I'm looking forward to reading The Rivals. Can't remember too much about it, but I think it was influential in Sense Sensibility. Um, and then the other one I want to read is um, The Bell Stratagem by Hannah Cowley from 1782, which is um, a comic play. And I don't know too much more about them than that, but it'll do. Um, I think this would be a really interesting read. Um, and it'd be quite interesting to read something by a um, late 18th century female playwright as well. So I'm looking forward to The Bell Stratagem. Um, and then the other thing that, that is on my like vague pile of possibilities for this prompt is um, Self Control by Mary Brunton, which is a Georgian novel I've been meaning to read for quite a long time, ever since Tilly from Tilly's Shelf did a video on it, which I think was actually quite a few years ago now. I'll link it down below. I think I've got this on my Kindle already, um, but I haven't read it yet. I will try and read it this Jane Austen July, but I have many things on my list, so I'm probably not going to get to it, but I would like to, so I thought I would put it on this TBR. 
as a vague statement of intent anyway. And then finally for doing Austin in July we have our two watching prompts. So the first prompt is to watch a direct screen adaptation of a Jane Austen book and for that I'm hoping to watch the 2007 Northanger Abbey adaptation. As Northanger Abbey is one of our read-alongs for this year I thought it'd be fun to re-watch this adaptation which I haven't watched for a while. Um, and also my husband Nick read Northanger Abbey last year um, so we can watch that together potentially. Um, and I really enjoy that adaptation. It's been quite a few years since I saw it last uh, but I think that'd be a really fun one to watch. And then for the final prompt which is to watch a modern screen retelling or adaptation of a Jane Austen book I have two things I want to watch. One is Rational Creatures which is a fantastic web series on YouTube which is a retelling of Persuasion. I saw the first series when it came out and um, the second series came out a few months ago which I think closes the story. I think that's the second half of the story um, but I haven't watched it yet so I'm gonna re-watch the first series and then watch the second series in July and I'm really really looking forward to watching that because I loved the first series very much. It's a fantastic modern retelling of Persuasion so I'm very excited for that. And then the other thing I would really like to watch is Metropolitan which is a film from the 1990s which um, apparently is a retelling of or homage to Mansfield Park. I don't know if I can get hold of it anywhere though because it's from the 1990s and um, so I'm gonna have to see whether or not I can manage to find it anywhere online that I can watch it or if I can like get it on DVD but I'm not sure. I can find places where I can order the video but that's not much help to me so I might try and watch Metropolitan but I'm not actually sure if I'll be able to find it anywhere. I might have to give up on that one but we'll see. So there we go those are all the things I want to read and watch in Jane Austen July. This is obviously a very ambitious pile of possibilities slash TBR. Far too many things here for me to read in one month but I'll see how I go. Um, I'm looking forward to reading lots of these things if not all of them. That's all for now. Do let me know down in the comments. Are you taking part in Jane Austen July? What are you reading? Um, and I'll be back very soon with another bookish video. Mm -hmm.